If you're a runner and you've experienced plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendon pain, or patellofemoral pain syndrome, or basically just about any running injury, there's a pretty good chance that somebody said that it's because of your shoes. So you either went down to your local running store or had a healthcare provider look at your running gait and then recommend a specific shoe. But are your running shoes actually the cause of your pain? And should you be concerned about the amount of cushion and the amount of pronation control in your running shoe? In this video, we'll talk about how you should actually select a running shoe and then some strategies to help prevent injuries. When picking a running shoe, the process usually involves having somebody analyze your gait and then picking a shoe based on those characteristics. So if they notice that you pronate when you run, they might recommend a shoe that helps limit the amount of pronation. Or if they notice that you heel strike when you run, they might recommend a shoe with more cushion to help absorb that load. The issue is that pronation and the type of foot strike that you have with running aren't actually associated with an increased risk of a running injury. This means that picking a running shoe based on this criteria is an outdated approach. And what's potentially worse is that this criteria might actually make you pick a shoe that's not very comfortable. And while it might seem extremely simple, the most important factor is to select a running shoe that feels the most comfortable. So what you should do is try on a couple of different pairs of shoes, go for a run in them, and then just pick whichever one feels more comfortable. But if you're looking at reducing your risk of suffering either plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendon pain, or patellofemoral pain syndrome, then what should you do? And if we look at what all of these conditions have in common, they're all overload conditions, meaning that we place too much load on the tissues, and that's what led to the pain. So what we need to focus on is actually load management. And there's a couple of different things that we need to consider. The first thing is that when we're increasing our running volume, we wanna avoid doing too much too soon. If we look at the research, sudden spikes in load are associated with an increased risk of injury. So we wanna gradually increase our running volume so that way we avoid those sudden spikes in load. Typically the recommendation is to not increase more than 30% in two weeks. But running volume is only one consideration in training load. You also have to factor in the frequency, intensity, and the terrain that you're running on. For example, if you've recently incorporated some hill runs, that's much different than running on flat land. And if you're incorporating some speed work, those five miles are gonna be much different than your low intensity runs. One way to evaluate all this is to take your running volume and multiply it by how difficult the runs are on a scale of one to 10. This will give you some indication of your training load. And we wanna make sure that when we're looking at the training load, that we're looking at the average over four weeks, which is called your chronic training load. So for example, let's say that you're running 15 miles per week and each of those runs are a three out of 10 in terms of difficulty. That means your average workload would be 45 per week. This means if we're using the 30% rule over two weeks, then the maximum value for the week would be 58. So we can either increase our mileage for the week by five miles or increase the difficulty to four out of 10. And this is one way that we can monitor our training load to make sure that we're not overloading the tissues as we progress our running volume over time. So hopefully this video on how to pick a running shoe and then how to monitor your training load to prevent a running injury was helpful. If you want to know how to use a smartwatch to monitor your training load, you'll want to watch this video over here. And to stay up to date on other running injury information, subscribe to the channel.